Welcome to the Art History 282 Closer Look at the School of Athens. In this chapter, we've been talking about art and artists from the Renaissance, but let's take a closer look at one of the artists and his famed fresco, the School of Athens. The School of Athens was painted by famed Renaissance artist Raphael. No, not this Raphael. The real Raphael was born in 1483 and is known for his clarity of form and ease of composition in his works. Considered one of the three great masters of the period along with Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. Commissioned by Pope Julius II in 1509 to decorate the rooms that were the Pope's personal library in the Vatican, the School of Athens is an important fresco because it represents the renewal of humanism and the world of knowledge during the High Renaissance period. The setting is a tribute to classical Roman architecture, also representing the high ideals of the Renaissance. The painting uses one-point linear perspective, bringing the attention of the viewer to the center between the two main characters, Plato and Aristotle, the two pillars of Western philosophy. For those of you who may not understand the concept of one-point perspective, I will demonstrate that for you now. So one-point perspective is a drawing method that shows how things appear to get smaller as they get further away, converging towards a single vanishing point. So the first thing that you actually need is a horizon line, which is around here. The center is a vanishing point. And these lines mostly converge to that center area. Gives the illusion of depth in a two-dimensional space. Next, we'll talk about how the fresco can also be divided down its vertical axis to reveal two complementary aspects of knowledge, the poetic and the scientific. The two sides complement each other, on the left, hearing and intuition, and on the right, vision and insight. Now let's talk about the figures that are actually in the painting. First is Plato. If we take a look at the gesture which Plato is making with his upward pointing finger, is symbolic in meaning. He is pointing to the source of higher inspiration, the realm of ideas, the motion of cosmological thought. The portrait of Plato is actually at the same time a portrait of Leonardo da Vinci, thus showing that Raphael was paying homage to the great master of the High Renaissance. Just to the right, talking to Plato, is his student, Aristotle. Aristotle, who is gesturing downwards towards the starting point of all the natural sciences and ethics. Aristotle is known for being the first scientist. He provided the first classification of plants and animals, and thus he was more concerned with the observation of the real world. On the left or poetic side of the painting, you can see Apollo in the niche. Apollo, the son of Zeus, god of light, truth, music, is playing the golden lyre. He is presiding over a representation of different philosophers. And on the right, or scientific side, you have Athena, the daughter of Zeus. She is the embodiment of wisdom, reason, and purity. She displays her full armor as defender of the city. On the left, wearing green, near Plato, is Socrates. He's engaged in an animated conversation with Alcibiades, Xenophon, and Alexander the Great. In the front and on the left side, there is a group of scholars with Pythagoras in the middle. Pythagoras is busy writing his explanation of the universe in terms of mathematical relationships of musical constances, the music of spheres. 
the key to harmony in the universe. On the very front step, there's a figure lost in contemplation, apart from the others. This is a dual portrait of the philosopher Heraclitus, in the guise of Michelangelo. Raphael was a big admirer of Michelangelo, and at the time of this painting, he was working on his masterwork, the Sistine Chapel ceiling. On the steps on the right side, isolated from the rest and seemingly lost in his own writings, is Dio Yanis, the cynic. His body is sprawled on the steps, and his loose tunic emphasizes his cynical attitude towards humanity and disdain for material possessions. His characteristic bowl is on the steps beside him. On Aristotle's side, the complementary to mathematics is geometry and astronomy represented by the group in front, which features Euclid bending down to draw on a slate tablet with a pair of dividers. Euclid is actually a portrait of Bramante, the architect of St. Peter's Cathedral. Euclid is bent down demonstrating a problem on the slate. He is surrounded by a variety of disciples, each representing a different phase in the process of grasping the concept, thus portraying different stages of intellectual maturity. Next to Euclid are two individuals holding spheres. The one with his back to the viewer, sporting a crown and a golden mantle, is Zoroaster, king of the Bactrians. While facing him and the viewer is the famous Ptolemy, holding a celestial globe. And last but not least is Raphael himself. In addition to his artistic talent, Raphael was known to be very charming, which led to him becoming so popular that he was eventually called the Prince of Painters. <laughs>